going to start off reading from Lamentations. It's 322 through 23. And it's really great. And I'm pretty sure Sister Chancy did not know what I was preaching today because I haven't talked to her. But forever God is faithful. How amazing that is. If you've got there, please stand. And we'll read this short, just one, two verses. Very short. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, as we come before you, we brought our praise and worship to you. Now we study your word and meditate on it. Let it pierce our hearts and minds and that we leave here with a new step, a new dance, a new song in our hearts for you. Just meditating on your faithfulness for us. And for all who would seek you, we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of this sermon first come to me, unfortunately, through tragedy. And that was our loss last week in the service of Brother Elrod. And the title of it is Semper Fidelis. Since 1883, this has been the Marine Corps official motto. It's Latin for always faithful. It is instilled into the mindset of every Marine entering boot camp and throughout their service. Semper Fidelis to God, family, country, and Corps. Notice I didn't need to look at notes for that because since 1988, that has been instilled in my brain. Sim I'm not going to ask you what year you went. Brother Wayne is nodding his head. It was instilled into his. And exactly in that order, correct? Simplify. God, family, country, core. What, but what does it mean? It means you're there. You're ready to serve. You leave no one behind. Up to the point that you would even lay down your life for your brother. Well, when we went through, it was only men in combat. So I guess I should say brothers and sisters now. That's not meant despairingly. Please don't take it that way. Um... 30 years ago, I was in combat. I guess 31 now. 31 years ago, I was in combat. To this day, and Tammy can verify this, to this day, I can call up any one of them brothers that I served with, and they'll be at my doorstep immediately, without question, without fail, because of Semper Fidelis, always faithful. And I would do the likewise for them. But we have one that is truly Semper Fidelis. Because no matter the love that me and Hank and Weber and Ledford and all the other ones have for each other, we cannot match the love that God has for us. His word even says that he is faithful. 78 times faithful is mentioned in the Bible. There's the word faithful. There's like, I uh, forgot the number, it's like 415 or something like that, that some form of faith or faithful, faithfulness, faithfully is mentioned in the Bible. And we serve that omniscient, all-knowing, that omnipresent, always present, omnipotent, all-powerful. He's omnipresent, always there, even when we don't realize it. The Lord is there and he is faithful, whether it's in the tragedies or in the blessings, in the valley 
or on the mountaintops. He is still there and we may not even see it. We prayed this morning for prodigals to return for our children. We have to have faith that he's going to do it because that's what his word says. Now, if you want to think of the tragedy part of that is we may not see it. It may not happen until the Lord has called us home. But we hold that faith all the way through because his word said, if you raise them, they will not depart. They will return. And if we hold to that, he is faithful and just. <laughs> Gotta love their technology. Almost said whose technology it is. <laughs> Even in our unbelief and doubt, our faltering faith, he remains faithful. 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. He is faithful to save us no matter what we've done, no matter how grievous we think our sins may be. There is nothing that he cannot save us from and turn us from. And that is, that is such good news because like Paul said, I am chief among you sinners and yet he saved me and to him be the glory. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful to be our defender and our protector. Because in 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, but the Lord is faithful. Who will establish you and guard you from the evil one? There is nobody that can do that. Brother Elrod used to joke with me in the hallway when we'd come through. Walk and he'd walk in, bump into me, and he'd always say, Oh, there's two of us. We can take this place over. He said, I ain't worried about these army guys. They ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> and we definitely ain't worried about the Navy guys. No offense, Brother Reed. <laughs> But it don't matter how many Marines or how many SEAL teams or how many Army Rangers or nothing else. They cannot guard you from everything. But we serve that omnipresent, omnipotent Father. I love the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir that we used to sing. And I'm not going to get it all but it's wonderful, glorious, holy, and righteous, victorious, conqueror, triumphant, and mighty, healer, defender, shield, and defense, my strong tower, my defense, my best friend. No one can compare to that, for he is there and is always there. Through the sunny days and rainy storms, whether standing on the mountain peak or trudging through a swamp in the valley, he is present in the source of all that is good. Psalms 144 sums up his faithfulness to us and to his word to guide us and to protect us. Going old school and breaking out the Bible. Forget this technology sometimes. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. 
Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of foreigners whose mouth speak lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David his servant from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners who mouth speak lying words and whose right hand is right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as pillars, calling them prodigals, sculptured in palace style, that our barns may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands of our fields, that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. He is faithful. He will train you. What is that? You're not going out to battle? Yes, you are. Every day you step out of these doors, you're going to battle. The devil wants to defeat you. I got to be careful with this rabbit trail, but this hit me the other day. Remember then the uh, Gospels where Jesus is talking about what heaven and hell will be like, and he uh, explains Lazarus is walking with Abraham, and there's another man who is in hell. And he cries out to Abraham, have Lazarus bring and just dip his finger in the water and put it on my tongue. There's a few amazing things with that. First, he could see Abraham. He was separated from God, but he could see. Lazarus could not see him. He knew who Lazarus was, which one one tells me we're going to know each other in heaven. He recognized Lazarus. He called him by his name. And he said, then send him back. <laughs> yeah, no, not happening. So as soon as somebody says ghost, go, nope, not biblical. Have a good day, moving on. But he could see him, but Lazarus couldn't see him, or at least it doesn't appear that he, he could. Like a one-way mirror, heaven and being with the Lord and walking with Abraham and Isaac and David, imagine all the greats walking through heaven with Elijah. Walking up one day and standing in line waiting to go give your testimony. Give your praises to the Lord, singing holy, holy, and having Paul walk up to you and go, tell me your testimony. I got to hear it. It is cool to think about, isn't it, Pastor? Especially when he walks up to you and goes, Man, in my day, I had to write on that, get a scribe to put on that parchment paper and hope that it made it across the sea. You had that device in your hand that you could reach hundreds and thousands every day. What did you do with it? Stop and think about that. What are we doing with what God has given to us? He is faithful but are we being faithful to him? Because he, he's going to call us upon it. What did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with your salvation? What did you do with the technology that I increased so that more could be reached?
Kind of makes you rethink them cell phones, don't it? And Facebook and Instagram and all the rest of them. What did you do with that technology? What were you looking up? Were you trying to study my word? Or were you looking at something that is listed in Galatians 5 as sexual immorality? What did you do with what I gave to you? I was faithful and just to save you. I was faithful in all that I could provide for you. How faithful were you in the little things? He is so faithful to us and we should praise him with every breath and every fiber of our being. And in summary, it really comes down to this. He has blessed us. We are without a doubt blessed. Blessed to be where we are. Blessed to live in the country that we are in. Blessed that he, he called us through his spirit to salvation. Blessed that he touches us and heals us. Blessed that he provides for us. Yes, I know we all go through hard times. We all struggle sometimes. I don't believe there's a person in this room that is worried about where their next meal's coming from. I may be wrong, and if I am, brother or sister, you need to come see me because that's what we're called to do is to help one another. But we are blessed in that. We are blessed to have that technology to reach people, to reach our family. We are, we're blessed beyond measure. And that omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, soon coming king has been faithful. And we must be faithful to him. We need to stand and sing that new song. The Bible says, remember the love of your youth. Remember what it was like when you first got saved. If you are just, if you're just being saved, hold on to it. If you've been saved for many years, remember back to what it was like when you first got saved the joy and the love and the glory that you felt because it doesn't change. Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Probably twisted that a little bit there, didn't I? But that's okay. We must love him as he has loved us. Be as faithful to him and to his commandments as he has been faithful to us to save us. And when we do that, when we share his good news, when we love God before all, when we love our neighbor as ourself, when we are faithful in them, everything else gets added. And if you're faithful in them three, it's a little more difficult to falter. If you would, bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for your word. We give you praise and glory and thank you for your faithfulness. Your mighty hand that covers and protects us. Your spirit that guides us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have sent as our comforter and our counselor, our teacher and our friend. We thank you, Lord, for Christ who died for our sins, that 
He was faithful unto death, even death on the cross. And we give you praise and glory for that. And as Christ stands in our intercession now, oh, how gracious and glorious you are, Lord, that you still to this day, 2,000 years later, you still love us enough to prod us to come to you. We give you praise and glory, and we thank you for everything that you beseeched upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. As um, Sister Chancy, oh, wow, that was good. <laughs> like, poof. <laughs> Can you do that forever, God is faithful again? I know that's not a normal request, but <laughs> as, as we begin, or not, clarify, not we, as they begin to sing, the, if you will, let's come to the altar as, as a body of Christ. And just give him praise for his faithfulness. Thank him for everything that he's done. Thank him for all that he's going to do. And there may be things coming down the road that you have no clue of. The stepping, keeping us safe as we travel. Tying us up in the traffic jam that almost borderline makes you want to lose your salvation, but he saved you from the head-on collision that was about to happen down the road. Thank him for all of it, all the blessings, known and unknown, seen and unseen, and we shall always give him praise. <laughs>